discussing the issues that make Phoenix a world-class city. Now, On the Issues. Welcome to my first On the Issues. I'm District 8 Councilwoman Kate Gallego. Coming up later in the show, we will learn about the latest high-tech gadgets for wiping out graffiti and see firsthand how neighborhood efforts are transforming the Garfield Historic District. First, I'm pleased to welcome to the show and to the city of Phoenix, our new assistant city manager, Milton Dahoney. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for asking me. So for those people who don't know, and I think that's very few of our Channel 11 viewers, but tell us what the assistant city manager does. The assistant city manager uh, oversees the police department. I also oversee emergency management. Uh, I work with the deputy city managers and the day-to-day -day operations of the government, working with all of the departments and I assist the city manager in whatever other issues that he may need my help with. Wonderful, well we're pleased to have you and we're you. really excited about all the experience you bring to us. So can you tell us a little bit about some of the other three cities you've spent your career in? I worked for more than 20 years in the city of Louisville, uh, Kentucky uh, government and then I worked for almost four years in Lexington, Kentucky and most recently, I spent seven and a half years uh, as the city manager of Cincinnati, Ohio. And our city manager also has Kentucky roots. So for those of us who are uninitiated, can you tell <laughs> us what we need to know about Kentucky sports and the rivalries that? Uh... Well, there's a huge rivalry in Kentucky between the University of Kentucky and the University of Louisville. I'm a University of Louisville graduate, and therefore I root for the Cardinals. And Ed informed me after I took the job that he's a big UK fan, so we have a good rivalry going now. Excellent, so we'll all have to watch closely to see who's winning in that. And That's exactly right, we'll have a lot of fun with it. Well, I hope that wasn't a bait and switch on you when you <laughs> learned out to, that we, you'd be working with the U university. Well, it's, it's funny how small the world is, so we both come from Kentucky and here we are out here in Phoenix, and uh, I'm really thrilled to be here and be part of the organization. Well, we're glad to have you and bringing ideas from all over the country. It's one of the things I think has made Phoenix so successful is that we do have people from all over the world coming here and it's a great place to start a career or finish a career and we, we take advantage of all the ideas and the best of the world because I think we're known for being a very open city and welcoming to people regardless of where they grew up. Well, I have met a lot of people in my two short weeks here. I've met a, a number of people from, as you say, a lot of other places. And one of the things that struck me uh, early on is how welcoming people are. Uh, it's been a very warm welcome for me to come into the Valley. And I, I can't tell you uh, how that's made me feel uh, about being here. So I'm, I'm just excited to be here and looking forward to working with the government and the community. Thank you. So I represent District 8, which includes the airport. So tell us about your first impressions upon arriving in Phoenix, what you saw today, and what you hope to see in a few years. Well, it's very impressive. The airport's a very impressive place. It, it clearly is an economic driver for the city. There's uh, a lot of people moving about. Uh, Phoenix is a very easy city to get around. I was also impressed with the rail system uh, at the airport for the people mover for getting people from point A to point B. And I think it uh, speaks well of the city. It's great that the city owns the airport. And uh, I think it, it has a bright future for us to continue to grow that economic driver. And speaking of rail, you have some experience with transit oriented development. So could you tell us about some of your ideas about how we can make our light rail system even more of an economic development engine? Well, uh, the, the experts tell you that you feel the economic impact at least three or four blocks in any direction from where a rail line is. So we have the opportunity here to look at our rail line, to look at opportunities for additional housing, for additional commercial development. Uh, there's an opportunity to place workforce housing along the rail line for people that need public transportation and all of that helps to increase our tax base. And so what I hope to do is work with the people here as we strategize on the best way to move forward uh, to see that we can get more revenue flowing into the city. The rail goes through some of our oldest and some of our newest neighborhoods. And uh, Phoenix is a younger city compared to some of the cities in which you've worked. One of our themes here today is reinvestment in the Garfield Historic Neighborhood. 
but you have a lot more experience than many of us in neighborhood revitalization and and I was hoping you could speak a little bit to that because I know that's one of your areas of interest. Yes, I've had the opportunity to do a number of community development projects in all of the communities I've worked in. Uh, a couple of the more uh, massive ones in both Louisville and Lexington, we were able to tear down uh, the last traditional sort of stereotypical public housing and rebuild those as mixed income neighborhoods giving the residents an opportunity to move back, but also inviting uh, new people to come into the area to make it thriving and contributing to the city. Uh, those things are hard to do, but they clearly can be done. And uh, I hope to just be a great part of the team here as we move to strengthen our neighborhoods across the city. We've spoken a lot about what you're gonna do at work, but do you have an Arizona bucket list? What are some of the things you hope to see once you unpack your suitcases? Well, I want to get out and see more of the community, not just Phoenix, but the entire valley. Uh, I'm not a big hiker, but I do want to take some mountain drives and uh, get out and see some of the museums that we have here. I, I think the culture is very strong. The, uh, the arts are very important to me, so I want to experience those and just uh, also the sports. So I'm looking forward to the Suns and the Super Bowl coming. And uh, I want to have a lot of fun, even though we'll be working hard, too. Excellent. Phoenix is a fun city. And as the first millennial on the council, I'm very focused on making sure we have those type of assets you just spoke about to attract the young entrepreneurs who could go anywhere. But we want them to be in Phoenix. We want them to choose us and to create those, create the next Google here. So I think we do need a vibrant downtown with a lot of arts and culture and sports. So it's great to hear that that's at the, the top of your bucket list. And it is, and uh, I, I think we have a lot going for us. We're strategically located. We have a lot of industries here. We have military presence here. We have a very busy and exciting airport. And uh, we just have a lot of assets to work with in order to grow the city and it's just an honor to be part of that organization. Well, thank you. We are filming just before the Kentucky Derby, so that's something that we, we, isn't as focus, we don't focus on as much here. You got any advice or tell us about that, that tradition? And well, the, the thoroughbred racing industry is a multi-billion dollar industry in Kentucky, and the Kentucky Derby is an event like no other. It draws people from around the globe uh, there'll be probably 160,000 people or so at the event. Uh, I will tune in uh, somewhere, and I, I was happy to see this morning that I can actually go to the racetrack here and uh, place a wager. So I may find time to do that before the week's over. Excellent. Well, on behalf of the council, we wish you very good luck in, in that wager, and you'll have to report back on how it goes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Up next, we'll talk about the latest high-tech gadgets to wipe out graffiti. Keep watching on the issues. Nice. No. Oops. Yeah. Sure. Let's go. Moms everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Works every time. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. Welcome back to On the Issues. I'm District 8 Councilwoman Kate Gallego. Phoenix recently had the honor of hosting an International Graffiti Expo featuring experts in the field and the latest gadgets to wipe out graffiti. Here's a look inside. Welcome to Zero Graffiti International here. We're here with the founder of Stop Urban Blight, Drew, who's gonna tell us a little bit about his background. Hey, yeah, four years ago, our nonprofit organization um, formed a group and held conferences locally. And then we went from there to having our first international conference last year in San Francisco. And then Phoenix expressed interest because we had one of your uh, detectives speak at our conference and expressed interest in having it in Phoenix. And Phoenix has an excellent program and we thought it'd be a great venue to have it. 
So this year we're having our conference in Phoenix. We have people attending from Australia, um, from London, from uh, Canada, and they're really excited to learn about the Phoenix program and network with each other and share ideas about what's working in the field of graffiti abatement. Wonderful, thank you for choosing our city for your conference. It's great to learn from others. We pride ourselves as trying to make sure we understand the best of what's going on elsewhere and continuously improving in our fight against graffiti. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about some of the products that are out there to help us with graffiti prevention and? Sure, one of the things that we felt was important to have at the show was uh, exhibitors. So they could share their products some about some of the new innovations that are out here. Um, one of the companies that's an exciting company is a Q-Star Technology that has a voice activated camera. If somebody's in the area, it actually sends out a message and takes their picture to let them know that they shouldn't be there to stop what they're doing. Um, also, we found that uh, murals and art a lot of times will deter vandalism because we feel that if you have graffiti with permission, it's not vandalism. It's when they do it randomly with vandalism that it's, it's an issue. So um, there's a company here called Clean Slate Group that actually has wraps that they can put around utility boxes that looks um, very nice. And they also have a graffiti resistant film on it. So if it does get tagged, it's easily cleaned off. Wonderful, so it gives us a sense to share a little bit about of our community, maybe put images on there that tell our story in addition to fighting. Graffiti. Right, and many artists will submit ideas that they can put onto these things, so it gives it a local feel. Mm -hmm. So it's not just random artwork, but it's something with the community, so it gives them a sense of pride. Wonderful, we can celebrate some of the things that are unique from each neighborhood to exactly each right. neighborhood. Exactly right, yeah. How would you say Phoenix is doing in fighting graffiti? I'd say you're near the top. They, I mean, there was, there's been a lot of cities that were looking forward to coming here because you do have a, a good program, and that's why we did the first day graffiti abatement A to Z in the city of Phoenix. So you had, we had the entire board, of, not board, but members of your city that were up there dealing with it, from William Hogan's, who runs the Blight Program, who received a Graffiti Fighter Award this year for 2013, as well as Detective Mike Kaditz, who uh, received a Graffiti Fighter Award as well for their excellent work. Great. And could you give us a sense of how big is this problem? What's the economic impact of graffiti? Huge. Uh, last number we heard from last year was $25 billion was being spent across the country dealing with graffiti vandalism, and that doesn't include private property. Wonderful. And we really pride ourselves on supporting entrepreneurs and small businesses. So if you, would you give advice to folks who are thinking about starting a business to help deal with graffiti? What's available? What would you recommend they focus their efforts on? I don't know about businesses necessarily, but what is really key is volunteers and community members getting involved with cleanup. And that's a big part of your city's program is mm -hmm. the volunteers, and that would be a big part there. As far as businesses, it's, it's hard to say. There are a number of graffiti removal service businesses, so it's hard to recommend one over the other, that kind of thing. Wonderful. Well, we're just hoping that our entrepreneurs will see opportunities where there's graffiti and help us find solutions because well, we haven't gotten to zero yet. <laughs> yeah, no, with as much money as being spent, I think there's a lot of opportunity for some businesses out there. Drew, thank you for coming to Phoenix and for all the work you've spent during your career trying to fight graffiti and gr get us to zero graffiti. We're glad you came to our city. We're glad to have you as a partner and hope we'll continue to work with you over the years to come. And now we're going to learn a little bit more about what's happening in Phoenix and some of our efforts. I'm here with Adela Torres from our City of Phoenix Neighborhood Services Department. Could you tell us what you do? I work for the City of Phoenix Graffiti Busters Program. I am Graffiti Busters Foreman. I am the actually the only female Graffiti Busters Foreman. Wonderful. Well, thank you for making history <laughs> in our Graffiti Busters program. It's exciting for me to interview you on my first show as a councilwoman, as the first councilwoman to represent District 8. So hopefully this will be the beginning of a long partnership. And thank you for your long service to our city. Since you have that longer perspective, could you tell us what it was like when you began working in the Graffiti Busters program, how we dealt with the problem and what tools we had available, and then tell us a little bit more about what we do here today? Well, I have been with the graffiti program for approximately 23 years. And when we first started, um, I was the first female graffiti buster. Um, and we had, um, we used one color paint and we had a sprayer and uh, we just went out removing graffiti. Um, and it wasn't quite that much and the city was a lot smaller. And uh, but compared to now, uh, we've really grown. We've grown to, um, we have like 12 graffiti crews that go out and we work, we have a seven day operation. And um, we, um, we've just uh, grown from um, just using sprayers to power washing, color matching equipment, uh, just state-of-the-art technology. 
We use a certain uh, piece of equipment, it's called a spectrophotometer, that we use to color match certain colors because we carry basic wall colors, you know, the whites and the grays and the tans. However, when you come across a specially colored wall, we use a spectrophotometer which takes a picture of the color and we store it in a little computer and we take it down and we download it and it prints out a formula for us and we're able to color match uh, perfectly with that unit. Wow, we've come a long way yes, since using have. just one color. That's very exciting. So we're here at Graffiti International and learning what other communities are doing. Are we using the best tools available? Absolutely, we are. We're, we have uh, one of the best programs. A lot of, uh, we've had a lot of uh, the participants come to us and ask us for advice and, and what actually what products we're using and what systems we have in place. And they're, they're, ten, they're going towards mirroring our program actually. Um, so we're quite pleased with that. And plus we've learned a lot here as well. The, um, there's a lot of uh, points that, uh, pointers that came up that you know, we picked up a few things on how we're gonna do our operations just a little better, how we can make it better. Wonderful, and congratulations. You were recognized, the, the program was recognized with an award, so that's great to hear. Appreciate all of our city's employees' work into getting us that award. And to help people understand why we won that award, could you tell us sort of how big the program is and how often you're responding to incidents? Well, we're removing around 75,000 sites, graffiti sites a year. We're receiving around 20,000 calls. So we have a, a good response from the community. They really, they report the sites and we're quite busy. Uh, community can just call our our hotline number, and actually it's a basic department number, it's 602-534-4444, uh, they can just call that number, 24 hours, 24 hotline. Well thank you to your team for working on the weekends and really following up quickly, it's a big problem and we wanna send a strong message to people that we don't tolerate graffiti, we want safe communities, we're gonna follow up and we appreciate our, our partners on the ground and our volunteers especially. So would you tell us a little about the role of volunteers and how people can get involved? Volunteers are very important to our program. They give up their free time, their weekends to, to combat graffiti in their neighborhoods. Um, we give them tools they need. Uh, sometimes we give them areas. Sometimes they just want to give up a weekend, a group of people. We, for example, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, we want to combat graffiti, okay. So we have certain areas, that, that some certain areas that we can't go into because of our equipment. It's difficult, so we save those sites for the, uh, for the volunteers and they'll go in, we give them the tools they need and they uh, remove the graffiti and they always do a beautiful job. Wonderful, well thank you for working with our volunteers and for the work your department does. It's great for Phoenix to be recognized and we'll work to continue to improve. And now we're gonna go back to the studio. Coming up next, a celebration in the Garfield Historic District. Keep watching on the issues. Every book is an adventure waiting to come to life. Visit new worlds. Encounter new friends. And discover the power of reading. Go to read.gov to read A Princess of Mars, the first novel to feature John Carter. A new world awaits. Read. When it comes to neighborhood revitalization, the Garfield Historic District continues to show how neighborhood city partnerships work for our community. <laughs> Garfield residents gathered on a Saturday morning to celebrate the 11th Street Improvement Project. So we're here to celebrate the recently completed pedestrian and transit improvement project in the historic Garfield neighborhood. Uh, Garfield is one of the city's neighborhood initiative areas and this project is a great example of the comprehensive strategic neighborhood revitalization efforts that we do in our neighborhood initiative areas. We were able to identify a funding source with our partner, the Federal Transit Administration, um, for a bus livabilities project and really connecting people and neighborhoods to where they need to go. Many Garfield residents use public transit and they're thrilled about improved bus stop shelters. Councilwoman Kate Gallego was there. I'm here with Roberto, who is our point person to lead up our efforts at the City of Phoenix in the Garfield neighborhood. And I was hoping, uh, Roberto, could you tell us what are you hearing from the neighborhood about this project? 
You know, Councilwoman, the neighborhood is ecstatic about uh, about this project. Walking up and down the street the other day, handing out flyers, inviting residents to the event. Residents are saying things like, you know, how beautiful the, the you know the project is, how much it's making a difference to their community, how safe they feel because now they have sidewalks and a street that is brightly lit with LED lighting. They love it. The process mainly was just partners from many different departments. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get over here in 2010 coming from another department. It was one of the first projects they had actually uh, assigned to me. Project had some challenges, um, but working with our, uh, in collaboration with the Streets Department, Transit Department, uh, Historic Preservation and others, we were able to overcome the challenges and, and finally get what the, the neighborhood needed. Trees, trees, trees. We love trees. In all the planning sessions I've gone through throughout this city, everyone talks about they want shade, they want shade. So we got trees. There was a discussion, they were concerned about watering them, and we kind of said, well, what? You're gonna just give us a moonscape? So no, they gave us trees, they've given us watering. So these are big trees now, but they're gonna get a lot bigger in the years, and they're gonna start blooming yellow here. I can see them starting now. It's gonna be really gorgeous. <laughs> you've enjoyed this first episode of On the Issues. If you have questions or comments, contact my office at 602-262-7493 or visit my website at phoenix.gov forward slash district 8. Thanks for watching.